songwriting group that she has hosted and organized and she has a long friendship with Louise Taylor who we're going to know more about shortly. So welcome. How did your musical paths intersect? Well, way back in the 90s. 1992 to be exact. Yes. <laughs> I made an album, Wendy heard it, and I was going to review it for Fast uh, Folk Musical yeah, Magazine. I was the managing editor at the time. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In New York. Okay. And I was in Vermont. And so I got in touch with Louise and uh, took me a little while to, to write the review because I've never reviewed a record before. I also have not <laughs> ever done one since. <laughs> oh my goodness! But that's how much I loved the record. I was like, I gotta review this. When I heard it, it's it stopped me on the way into somebody else's kitchen and I was like, this is better than food. <laughs> and that's saying a lot. Wow. <laughs> so we met and became fast friends. Mm -hmm. Did some fast folk shows together, Jack Hardy and others, many others. A lot of people that we still know and write songs with. Mm -hmm. or Give made each other feedback. feedback. Yeah. Was that the pandemic release album, the more songs about birds and trees? Trees. trees. Yeah. Yes. Your songs bookended that. And that was a project yeah. from a different songwriter group. So that got released in 2021, yeah. but it was a 2020 pandemic, pandemic project. project. Yeah. 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 Cheers, girl. <laughs> Because that time period, I know, is very rich in both of your musical lives, the 1992 period, you're back east, mm -hmm. and you're very active in both this Jack Hardy songwriting group, which obviously influenced how I know you. Yeah, I was very fortunate that what, I'd only written maybe two or three songs, and I was invited to this songwriter's exchange at Jack Hardy's house, and there's a weekly meeting and write a song a week and you know give each other feedback and so it was really early in my writing and I found that the deadline worked and it worked so well that to, to this day all these years later so it's 1987 that I wrote my first song and wow. I've been you know doing the deadline ever since amazing yeah yeah and were you ever in that songwriting group I went down there a few times but Wendy and I became such good friends that we did it uh, over the phone. That's right. When phones had like cords and cords. we would hold the yeah. phone like this, like this and play the guitar. Oh, yeah, and yeah, sing yeah. Our song. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and our phone bills were high. Yeah. And, and our <laughs> necks were like uh -oh. really sore. <laughs> and was it the same song you were bringing to the? There's something on fire over there. Yeah, I think they're they're testing a, uh, <laughs> a, a flare. Oh yeah, it's, it's well, like a flare. Just, we it's noticed it's the smoke the dark, on the water. It's a lovely, <laughs> it's a lovely orange. What happened was, you know, we each had our own aspirations in music. And then we decided to do some teaching. Of course, we oh, used voice coaching. Mm -hmm. And myself, you know, my fortunately also had a great passion for yoga and mindfulness. And, that became my main gig and 
kept playing music, kept writing songs, but then we each went off and were teachers mm -hmm. uh, and had other jobs as well. Yeah. But right. That was and I toured for 20 years. You did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Right. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Right. Well, you were doing yeah. a fair amount of performance yeah. through yeah. the 90s yeah. as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. So talk a more about the practice of songwriting, because it seems that you both landed on that early. Yeah. Um, mm. Fortunately for me, I met Wendy, because I was just sort of writing whatever came out, and the first record is just kind of whatever was there. I didn't really have any craft or skill with it. And I met Wendy and learned more about the craft of songwriting and improved my songwriting. And it's how about a, you? Yeah. Like, you started Jack's group so early. Say more about what that was yeah. for, for our viewers. So each week, show up, you bring a new song that you've written since the prior week, and we all have dinner together, as you know, because we've been to the, the songwriters meeting offshoot that we've done here. And then uh, after the dinner, you, you take turns, play a song, and people give feedback. And, and you know, the deadline, of course, gets you writing songs. If you don't write a song, you show up anyway, and listening, you know, is often inspiring, and then you just go mm -hmm. ahead and write. And when I first started, I was, you know, in my early 20s, and I was brand new at songwriting, and I really learned how to listen. I really learned how to listen to the songs, to the feedback that was being given, and I remember that moment when I became able to start offering feedback myself. Mm. And so I really grew up as a songwriter there. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a semi-famous among songwriters manifesto that you've sent mm -hmm. to past and present participants. Mm -hmm. Were you an adherent to that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And how, now that it's been decades of doing this, mm -hmm. does it boggle you that you've written that many songs? <laughs> or that you've done this that long? Or I just, I just can't imagine life without it. Yeah. I, you know, so... Um, I. I, I love it. It's you know, and if I don't write, you know, there every once in a while there's been a period of not writing songs, and then I realize it just makes me angry. So I keep writing. <laughs> <laughs> this song's called Treading Water. <laughs> Thank you. 
choice. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was fun. <laughs> um, I know there was a moment there. I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> I feel more alive when I'm writing. I feel more actually attuned to life and to the you know the, the amazingness of life when I'm writing. It so, also always feels new. It always feels like, will I write another song? Oh, yeah, there's that. Can I write another song? I just had that like two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> Talk a little bit about your respective processes when you're like, okay, I've got a song due. Yeah, I mean, there's several different approaches, but the, my main approach is, you know, sit down with the guitar and try and find a melody or, or a group of chords that sound good together, and then I'll kind of stumble along with lyrics, um, you know, babble until something sounds good or catches my ear, and then uh, fill out that idea. Mm -hmm. And then I maybe kind of quickly sketch it and then edit it later. Mm -hmm. Or there is... <laughs> I got a chili. I got a in my liver. <laughs> So that's the other approach is like you hear something that sounds either as or you feel something like you have a an event happen or you see an event in the news that's moving and you want to describe it. And that's we approach it from the lyrics first. I think you often approach from the lyrics first, don't you? It's yeah. a mix. It's uh, a mix. Yeah, sometimes I'll just just start it all at the same time. Sometimes, you know, just making sound, any old sound, and then they, they start to sound like words. They do keep, you know, a, a short list of ideas that every once in a while I look back and I go, yeah, that's no longer a good idea. <laughs> or, oh, I used that one already. <laughs> you know, words, phrases. We recently read one together for our first time, just oh, really? last week. And yeah. so how did you start? What was your process? Well, Wendy had a dream and had written it down and wanted to tell me about it and so that was the first line of the song yeah and then she came up with some chords I came up with a second line and then we sort of saw a pattern and we we did things with that pattern Have and you we yeah. laughed and laughed because we came up with lots of silly things <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we dialed it in and, and uh, yeah. yeah you have such a long-term friendship and sounds like uh, tr trusted listeners to each other. Mm -hmm. Did that happen naturally over time? Was that something to build? Like, you, you trust each other to say anything? Yeah, it goes in easier. Um, when she's giving me her, she puts a totally trust her judgment. It doesn't mean I might not say no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And that's the thing, we always know. It's up to the writer to make the choice and right. to say, okay, what does the song want? But having the feedback from a trusted friend is amazing. And there are times when I'll, you know, like I totally trust Louise, so if something is not quite working, she will tell me and I count on her for that. And then when something is really, you know, like you really, it resonates with you, mm -hmm. I believe you. Right. Because I might not believe everybody. Right. You might go, I don't know what they're they talking about. <laughs>
something beautiful Something to show you What I most want to tell you here All of the reasons I have gathered before disappear I ring your doorbell Though I come empty I had wanted to bring you something beautiful There's nothing more potentially volatile and neurotic than a bunch of people with their, their new, new song. song. <laughs> <laughs> and also your guidelines in your group is one of the most structured and in integrity with itself group to so many yeah. groups aren't that way mm. <laughs> right and that's sort of the teachings of jack hardy don't you think his ideas of how you should be in the songwriting group like that list of rules the list of ways of being yeah that definitely has that's it gave us a structure and then and i think our bay area flavor also has always looking for you know something positive too yeah, and to mm. balance it was that a big sea change coming from East to West. Different culture, for sure, for sure. But hosting it, um, for me, personally, to be of of service, what I need to do is to do what really moves me and what is nourishing for me. Mm -hmm. And so hosting meetings gets me writing. Mm -hmm. It keeps me writing. And I have to show up because I'm cooking dinner and a bunch of people are coming. So I can't not go. (laughs) Right? Because if somebody else were hosting the meeting, would I go as as regularly I don't know so I really set it up so that I have to show I have to go because you know (laughs) it's a good kind of pressure and then getting to hear all these new songs every time is so rich and and exciting and everybody's everybody's nervous I'm you know I'm still nervous to play the the brand new song Mm -hmm. and then just that energy in the room of brand new song all these people and oh and, and here are some of the things that everybody's thinking about that are similar or words will show up like four people with the same unusual word will show up in the song you know the synergy yeah the, the collective yeah. unconscious mm-hmm. is really interesting say a little bit more about how the whole yoga and mindfulness thing got started mm. thing yeah <laughs> so you were in new york being a songwriter and yeah it was actually before then okay what did you say? Oh, Patsy. Oh, yeah. Ready? That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it, was, it, was a, it was such a musical style. I was like, oh, he's singing something about tacking. <laughs> um, let's see. It was actually, I was in college, and I was going through a very difficult time, and I uh, happened to see Thornton Wilder's play, Our Town. Mm-hmm. And in the moment of the play, where the woman who we had met as a young girl and she died in childbirth, and she gets to see her town for the very first time from this purgatory sort of place. And, you know, she goes back for just one moment to experience life now that she knows how amazing it is. And she very quickly, her parents come down and, you know, sing happy birthday to her, and she realizes that they're not really being present. Yeah. And she can't take it, and she goes back to this purgatory place, and she says to the narrator, and this was the life-changing line for me, she says to the narrator, does any human being ever fully realize life while they live it, every, every minute? Mm. And I walked out of that theater completely changed, and I said, anything that makes me feel this way, that's what I'm going to. And I already had music, I was already writing songs. I already loved, you know, walking in the woods and being at the ocean and laughing with friends. And anything that was like that, that was it for me. That was that was the beginning of my path. And then pretty soon after that, yoga, meditation, and then I realized, oh, this is the same thing. And then, you know, and that space of meditation is really the same space of music, of writing songs. Mm-hmm. So that's not at all. 
And then at the time when I was touring, everywhere I went, for I would look for the find the health food store, and then that would help me find the yoga studio. <laughs> and then I would just do yoga classes everywhere I went. And then at some point, I was like, let me just take a yoga teacher training just to deepen my practice. And I never thought I would teach. And then afterwards, I just naturally was like, this is so cool. Try this. Mom and <laughs> dad and friends. And then little by little, I, uh, I was teaching. Mm -hmm. And then how did that intersect? Because you were friends by then or you were becoming friends? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. in fact, we did our her first yoga together, together in her living room. I brought a book down together. Oh, yeah, that's we, awesome. We uh, unknowingly <laughs> cracked it open right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Did like one of the hardest poses. Like light on yoga. <laughs> and, 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 and it, was, it, was, it, was, it was, you know, it was so my anger. And uh, we're taking turns reading the instructions and we moved the table out of the way and we were taking our pose and, and then it said, and now notice the sensations in your body. It was like, <laughs> There's a whole life in here. I can be at home in my body and in a whole new way. Yeah.
music is going? Um, it's it's uh, it's great. Oh, There's oh, a oh, point. Oh, oh. <laughs> She's got her shirt in there. I, I got okay. you. It's all right. We'll I mean, uh, release it later. <laughs> we released it in about the three minutes. <laughs> so you, you got settled in Hawaii and Oahu. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know much about the songwriting scene. They are happening, but it wasn't the same songwriter scene as on the mainland. There's some amazing Hawaiian musicians, some of the best musicians I've ever heard. Mm. And they are playing in places like your local group pub. You know, they're also playing on international stages, but they're down at like Ona Brewing, you know, mm -hmm. playing for two hours. Mm. And so that's kind of the scene there. They don't really have a huge concert scene and it's a small island. Mm -hmm. So there's that island and there's a few other islands that you could travel to, but to tour from there is is a big hop, you know, it's a financial big hop. And were you doing songwriting I was exchange teach, with I was, Wendy? I did <laughs> some. I think I did some, but the time difference made it hard. But you zoomed but in. But I zoomed in for the, the California songwriters. Mm -hmm. And I played in an Irish band for a while. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's three, fun. Three years in an Irish yeah. band. That was great. I love Ireland. I love Irish music. And I taught a lot. Started Teach teaching. voice. When did you start teaching voice? probably 20 years ago, at least, but not full-time because I was touring. But mm -hmm. when, once I was on the island, then I could focus more on that. She's an amazing voice coach. I had gotten to the, this point in my... Ready about. Ready. When I was um, either teaching yoga, I used to voice, uh, or singing high, in a high register, I was experiencing vocal strain and knowing that Louise is such a gifted coach, we got online and she gave me a lesson and she immediately knew what could help me and I practiced it and it helped immediately. And it was it was also, you know, another like a transformational moment. It wasn't just a, a physical uh, benefit, but it was like, you know, more presence. Mm -hmm. And um, and then so we kept going. And so many times in that experience, she would say something to me and I'd say, I teach the same thing in mindfulness. And it just more and more, and finally, like, all right, we got to put this together. And so we created this, these retreats called Your Your Mindful Voice. We talked and, about it for a year and put together the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we always knew that my partner, Karen Almquist, would be part of it as a massage therapist, but she's also a great musician. And so it's this weekend retreat where like 25 people come and everybody agrees to be present and open all your senses and, and look for the good in yourself and each other. You know, it creates a space for everyone to take risks vocally, whether speaking or singing. And there's a lot of laughter and tears and it's creation really of an instant community. Too. Really instant yeah. community, really profound and each one has been different. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you and the influential vocal teacher that yeah. was your mentor. Yes. Perhaps can you say more about Frank Baker? Frank Baker. Yeah, Frank. I met Frank when I was maybe 23. This is in Vermont? In Vermont. I heard about him because there were a few singers there that I just loved their voices. And I said, you know, did you study voice and where? And they told me about this guy, Frank. Uh, when I met him, he was 72, I think. Mm. He'd had a stroke when he was 56 mm. and lost use of half his body and his vocal folds were paralyzed oh, wow. and he was an amazing singer before that oh, wow. and he, he never regained his singing but he never gave up trying <laughs> he kept trying he could talk in a whisper kind of and make you know happy sounds he had a radiance to him he was definitely the greatest guru of my life and just believed that anyone could sing you know just had so much faith in that just kind of held you and that was it, and gave you permission to try. Mm -hmm. What else is there?
so much was put on pause these past couple of years. It sounds like fortunately you both had practices in place, so that mm -hmm. might help you ride through some of those initial mm -hmm. shutdowns. How did your relationship to your music or music community shift or evolve just in the past couple of years? Well, um, as you know, I had been hosting and continue to host the monthly meeting, which we, we brought online. Mm -hmm. And then... Bob Hillman and Tim Robinson realized, hey, we could have anybody come to a songwriters meeting. So they put together this group of 13 people from around the country and invited each of us. And I, at first, I said, I can't, I can't do it. I've got a thumb injury. I can't play guitar right now. And I'm full busy because I was one of the fortunate people who could keep working, you know. And but Louise jumped in, and then she said, "Come, just come and listen one time." <laughs> and I said, "Okay, I don't, you know, I don't have any song. I'll just listen." And I, and I listened, and I thought, "There's no way I can do this. No way I can write a song a week. I can't play guitar mm. right now." But at that first meeting, the writers are so good, so strong. It was just so rich and exciting. And I'm like, "Okay, here I go. I'm gonna jump in and do it." So for the first five months I either wrote a cappella oh, wow. or I played the iPad guitar which is not pretty but <laughs> I got good at it mm. but uh, and Louise said well why don't you try piano maybe that would work for your hands I was like oh, I'm not that good at piano and this was another life altering moment she said Louise Taylor said <laughs> to me maybe you could get better 
Oh, what a good friend. <laughs> yeah. What a wise teacher, too. So, yeah. so very gingerly, the like, first few chords, and my brain's trying to organize things, like, what what's happening here? I kind of remember this. Ah, you know. <laughs> and go to the G, go to the G, ah, you know. And, <laughs> and then little by little, not only did I become more comfortable with it, but I actually love it. Mm, I yeah. love it. And your songwriting changed again. Just the kinds of songs that you're coming up with are different than you would have on the guitar. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, different styles that different. I'm experimenting with. And there's a different emotion, emotional connection as well. Yeah. And how about you? Well, the group, basically the group. Um, because I had been a touring artist and you know recording artist and left that behind to go work in an office and had to totally lose all my ego about who I was. I had to replace that person with the office lady. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like a musician having the space and time to write again and be with all these amazing writers, uh, just sort of feel myself becoming a musician again. That's probably the biggest change. Mm -hmm. And both of you did at least a little bit of recording. Yeah, yeah, that was another thing that changed. Yeah. We sort of dared each other to get home recording yeah. equipment. Bob Hillman kind of who was like, you guys could do this, you know, you can do this. He's like, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. Garage band. <laughs> <laughs> Just get a good mic. This is a, a hymn, a healing hymn for the country and the world. <laughs> collected this nice roving 
troubadour community <laughs> between mm-hmm. your luthiers and your producers mm-hmm. and your songwriter exchange, mm-hmm. which is wonderful. But who were the, the producers? Did you know them back east before you worked with them? I used Peter Galway on two albums. Two albums. Mm-hmm. My third and my fourth. Um, and Annie Gallup uh, helped me produce. We worked together on the fifth. And then the two of them together on the sixth. And as a, as a songwriter, uh, Annie Gallup was part of the Fast Folk shows that we, we performed together. Yeah, we Actually, we met her because Jack Hardy heard her record and we sang one of her songs together. We sang together. one of her songs, oh, that's right. right. With Lucy Kaplansky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Fight mm-hmm. the Devil. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's how we first met Annie through her music. It's so cool. I, like the music goes out <laughs> as the messenger to gather the people. Well, so going forward, it sounds like your plans are more your mindful voice retreats. Mm-hmm. And we'll be having new records from both new of records. you. Yeah. How yeah. do you pick your songs for your records? We're trying to keep a running list of all the songs. And the, the ones that we like float to the top of that list. And the ones they get practiced more, we realize what they are or what they maybe aren't or how they fit together. Usually when I go into a record project, I usually record more than I need. And that way I can cull if something doesn't come out like I like it. Same thing, you know, keeping a list of what I call strong songs, and then what am I feeling connected to, you know, uh, heart and being, and so I'm practicing, practicing, practicing uh, yeah. <laughs> to, to make my first piano record. All right. Oh, neat. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to say one more thing about the whole idea of, like, strong songs. I know there's mm-hmm. the ones that you're, like, you find yourself singing, you're wanting to sing. Mm-hmm. Like, to me, there's, like, the category of, like the medicine songs, you know what I mean? Like, right. this is a good song for me to sing right now. Right. right. Do you ever not know a song strong until you get the feedback from somebody? Mm-hmm. The songs people like is also part of that mm-hmm. strong song list. Yeah. It's not the end all, though. Mm-hmm. But, so if we don't like it and they everybody loves it, I don't know if I'd do it. I wouldn't, I don't think. I don't think you would. No, I <laughs> <laughs> under the bed Four ravens circling Ghosts in my head The past The past The past Is over One lives in a body in stone Fossils in pain so
thanks so much, Wendy Beckerman, the amazing Wendy Beckerman. <laughs> and the amazing Louise Taylor. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on Espresso today. It was a fabulous day. You're amazing. We can't wait to hear those recordings <laughs> of the new songs and for the adventure to continue. Oh, thank you for this adventure. Oh, Deborah and It was amazing. <laughs> so much fun. So much fun. We, we love the Bay! Love the bay.